You know, I must have spent about 15 minutes trying to decide whether I wanted to do this video today or not on the Google Pixel A 8a update, getting Gemini Nano in the June feature drop. And you know, for, to try to get me excited about talking about something, isn't that a tough of an ask? People haven't been able to shut me up since I'm eight years old. So for me to have to sit here and think about it, if there were enough of the things that I wanted to go over on the Gemini Nano update for the Pixel 8a is a sad commentary on what we actually got. Now, I, I'm going to go over There's a couple of cool things that I really thought. Uh, the company has really admitted that it's just the beginning. You know, that they're going to release more features. It's really only in developer options right now. We'll show you how to get in there. So it's not. It's certainly not. It's far from a finished product, and I get that. And there may be things later on that I get excited about. And there are things about AI that I am excited about. But here's the thing: I will absolutely fight for your right to get it on this device. That I could talk plenty about. That I'll jump up and down about because I think it. It. It's definitely. I'm glad that they put it on here. The couple things that I use seem to be working well. I don't notice any real slowdowns or problems or stuff like that. I guess that I guess they overcame that massive RAM deficiency that they had to worry about. That somehow wasn't a problem on the S24 series of devices, but was was debilitating over here on the Pixel 8a. They were gonna wasn't gonna get it. Gemini Nano, no, bridge too far. Then all of a sudden, oh, it's a beta, and now all of a sudden it's here. So let's talk about how you get it. Let's go ahead into the, because you got to do a couple different steps. So we're going to go into settings because they want to hide it from you. Oh, we skipped a few there. But you're going to, to you need to unlock developer options, which most enthusiasts watching this know how to do. But we're going to go back and go to about phone, then all the way down the bottom. Then you're going to tap the build number here. You're going to go to build number there. You're going to tap it seven times. It's not going to do it because I'm already in developer mode. Then you're going to go back out to settings. You're going to go all the way down to system. And then you're going to see this little tab here that says developer options, and you're going to click on that. When you click on that, you get a bunch of different things. I would recommend, unless you really know what you're doing, staying away from most of the things because you can really affect the performance of your device. But you can go up here and search, and it says clear memory, AI core settings. And when you click on that, it'll bring you down, AI core settings. And there it is. You can see you can, check, you can uh, go ahead and click this over. Enable on-device Gen AI features AI core using a Gemini. And that gives you access to the features that they've released so far, including some on-device ones. Yes, it's nice to have different speakers labeled in recorder, but that's a very, a very specific use for a lot of people. There are a couple other things. It's nice to have the... The reverse lookup now, that was part of the feature drop. That's on more of the devices. You're going to see more with photo, how it picks the lenses and stuff like that with the AI stuff. And, of course, there's going to be more AI stuff to follow down the line. But it is nice to at least see Google follow through and give us the feature set that we should have had from the beginning, or at least once they released it on the Pixel 8 Pro and not have us kind of jump up and down and complain and be able to get it. Because I, make no mistake about it. That's why when people say, oh, what's the big deal about AI? And I admit it. There's not, there's not a lot that's really moving the needle for me so far. However, this is why you get uppity about certain things. This is why you go to bat and say, hey, wrong is wrong and right is right. Give us what we should have. Because I guarantee you, if Google didn't get the backlash that they got from, from coming out, those developers saying that the Pixel 8a and the Pixel 8 were not getting Gemini Nano features. If they didn't get just the absolute, absolute wall of, of blowback on that, you would not be having this, uh, these feature sets on this device right now. You would not be looking forward to the future. You'd not be turning on any sort of, of developer options or anything like that. There'd be nothing here. Make no mistake about it. Nobody, Google's not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. Okay. That was absolutely a, a wave of people in the community making enough noise about something that you're like, you know what? Our little marketing ploy here isn't going to work. And that's all it was. You know, you could say technically, yes, there, I'm sure there are things that require more RAM and all the rest of it, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, to me, it was a marketing ploy to say, here, you know what? Buy the Pixel 8 Pro. Spend more money because you're going to get better AI features. And it just didn't work. Just didn't work. So that's why we make videos of all these things. And that's why even though I myself am not necessarily uh, plus by, I'm pretty non plus by AI stuff at the moment, I do think that it was important to go ahead and make sure that we got some of these things. Video, a display port out, a display port now 
on your Pixel devices, including the Pixel 8a, which I thought was nice. You get that here, so you could go ahead. It helps with presentations. Helps if you're using it. And de- it, it just it's a good feature to have for sure. And a lot of people complained about not having video out on their devices, and now the Pixel devices got that through a software update. So overall, running well. I like the Pixel 8a. We've gone over this a million times. The problem, my problems with the Pixel 8a have nothing to do with the device itself. It's really nice. I can't wait for it to hit about a hundred bucks or a hundred. <laughs> I can't wait for it to hit a hundred bucks. That's for sure. It's stealing it or something like that. I can't wait for it to hit, hit 350, 400 bucks. I think it's a fantastic device for that. I can't wait to see what AI features it gets. You know, one of the things I like about Gemini overall using it is I like when the I like the camera app implementation. I like AI as a back end tool. I don't want to have to direct it. I don't have to send in prompts. I, I can't, you know, chat GTP is still the same thing. I don't want to come up with prompts of what I need to put in and, and phrasing it the right way. And well, what if you do this? I don't want to do any of that. I like the back end implementation into apps. Take what you know I want to do because I've already told you I want to do this because I've opened this app. If I open the camera app, I've told you I want to take a photo. If I open the phone app, I told you I want to do something that's related to phone calls. If I open your know, messages, smart replies now with messages. If I open messages or email, I've told you that I want to send an email. So you know what my objective is. So you don't need a prompt. The prompt is me opening the app. So then the back end stuff, like the, the lens selection and like all the rest of it, that's the stuff that I'm looking forward to. And now we've seen at least a baseline of that implemented on the Pixel 8a. And that's something that we were not getting before. So the smart messages replies, yes, summary is okay, but it's not really going to use it. The camera stuff. And then overall, you're going to see a lot more of this stuff creeping into every single one of the apps, email, all the way down the line. When you're talking about Gemini Nano, you're going to see more and more uh, grammar help and uh, idea help. And all these people that are, are terrified of writing an email and making it sound right, you're going to have all the help with that, getting the wording correct on your email. So That's stuff that I think is really interesting coming down the pike. And that's why it's cool to start to get some of that at least and know that the Pixel 8a, you're at least in the game. You're in the ballpark, right? You weren't in the ballpark before. Now you could get one of these, 500 bucks, a lot of money now. Obviously, Pixel 8, 550, pick up one of those in the meantime. But when this gets to 350, 375, you're getting yourself a nice little entry point with a Tensor G3, 8 gigs of RAM, beautiful display, decent build quality, and now the performance and the AI kind of stuff to go with it. And I'll tell you what, if, if Google's going to have any, any advantage going forward, they better lean into heavily, he, heavily lean into the Pixel Extras and the AI Extras and all the rest of it, and they better make it work well. Because I'll tell you what, marketing's not their strong suit, and hardware's not their strong suit. So they better learn. And better wise up on some of this stuff and get us a an AI a industry class leading AI experience. So hopefully that's the beginning of that with the June feature drop for your Pixel 8a. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lister's desk.